everybody welcome wow my lights are i got flickering going on in the background all kind of weird things Ooh, my desk situation is very off today <laughs> there's all kind of things happening but we should be good so hopefully my audio is good and everything um actually i did notice that my audio was uh peaking a little bit on the last show when i was screaming well not screaming but trying to talk in a loud voice as felix um but it's really weird my microphone um you know i have it at a particular setting that works for most recordings that i do on other shows that like i'm on and like podcasts and such um but for some reason, on this show, it tends to, like, change a bit. So, hey, Salty Ginger. Thank you for joining and being an awesome mod, as usual. You are a mod extraordinaire. Um, all right, y'all. So, let's get into some kids on bikes. Uh, so, first, I want to actually close all these other things I have open here. So, I don't have too many, too many windows. Um, and then I also want to switch back to our main map of Techburg here for now. Okay. So what I want to do at the beginning, actually, because I realized I haven't, I haven't been uh, doing this, was uh, talk a little bit about what the show is and what this stream is for, um, you know, any uh, new people that are joining. Um, so, uh, I'm Sharif, I'm the GM for the Kids on Bikes, uh, tabletop role-playing game, which we play Mondays at 10 a.m. Central, um, and of course all the archives are on YouTube, um, you know, on the little, uh, you know, all the links on the bottom here to the Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Um, if you just search for Kids on Bikes actual play, um, on roll 20, we should come up there as well. So I like to use these streams to show you how I create maps, um, and how I do different things with the world. Um, I definitely try to keep this spoiler free. Occasionally one small thing might get out there that we covered in a previous episode. I'm never going to do things that we haven't covered yet. Um, but you know, if you want to be a hundred percent, like, I don't like, I'm interested in the show and I don't want to know anything. Um, there might be some things here from the previous episodes, but in general, this is designed so that anybody can like enjoy it. So you don't need prior knowledge of the show. Um, you don't need to be completely caught up, you know, and you don't have to have to worry about spoiling yourself for any future, uh, Ep, ep, episodes but it's pretty exciting because we are at the we're over the halfway point we just finished our sixth episode um and yeah that is 18 hours of show because <laughs> each show is three hours long so so we've been in Techburg for 18 hours uh and y'all last episode just had me smiling so much smiling the whole way seeing how the players um navigated the situation that i put them in um we made great use of lighting um we had another map where um the lighting was uh you know the there was a lighting source that um that like prohibited what the players could see so i'm actually going to show you that so as always, on like roll twenty, I have my, I have my like main view here, but then I'm gonna duplicate that tab so I can create a second tab, and then I'm gonna exit this tab. Well, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna click on exit and rejoin as player on the settings here. Then then like I'm I'm gonna click rejoin as player. That way I have my uh, GM view here and my player view here. So, so I can see exactly what, exactly what the uh, players are seeing. So actually, I need to move my players. 
Oh, actually, actually, they 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 they, they are still in this area. Yeah. So this is what they see. This is what they ended seeing in the previous episode. And this is what we had designed, right? So they went in and they opened a coffin, which was a great scene of uh, four just collapsing into a group of tears while uh, I, I mean, like Mana was just completely fearless, the most fearless 11 and a half year old I've ever met. Uh, I think she rolled like a 24 or something. Where's where's her roll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, 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 look at that. Her grit roll was 24 when she was opening up a coffin in the dark in like a creepy like building, you know? So so we left with uh, Felix staring at this statue here with these boxes. And we saw some treasure chests on the bottom as well. So yeah, um, so just to show you a little bit of uh, what I did, I basically used a uh, dungeon here, um, and I had some other icons here, but that part, the uh, the um, characters actually didn't navigate up to that part. I kind of kept it down in this lower part, and I did add some things that I didn't mention in our map building part, because, you know, I'm not going to mention every single thing. Um, but I did. So, so there were some uh, tentacles that I added in there. So I actually did finally use some of the tentacles that I think I got on the maybe the first GM session. You know, so so I always keep a sheet that, that like I called unused assets. And then I just have a bunch of different like tiles characters and the tentacles here so uh if this is your first time we have had some tentacles in the game and i have a whole bunch right here i have like a vat of them i have i i think this is the one that the the, 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 the like i used i have a mass of them here and i have some animated ones i'm still not sure i'm going to use the animated ones or not um, but we shall see. So, great. Awesome. So, uh, what I want to do today is I actually want to, I want to redo this map of Techburg here. Um, so, whoops. So let's actually... So we can do this duplicate page button. Uh, we're gonna duplicate everything. So we're basically gonna have Techberg 2. We'll call it Techberg 2. Whew. And what we're going to do is we're going to change some things around here. So first, I want to go into the GM view, which actually I can't, can't click anything there. I'm going to go on the, um... oh, wait, something changed here. Oh, no, wait, no, 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 I didn't. I'm just losing my mind. All right, yeah, so I want to go into the object and tokens. Well, into the map view, because all this stuff is in the background. And I want to change some things around here. So, well, actually, it might not be that different. But I'm going to get rid of these houses here. And I basically want a... Um, a different kind of house. So let's just look for old house, which I know is a not a great uh, use of search terms here. Most of these are broken carts and stuff. But yeah, I, th I think carts would be a good thing to have. Um, so let's drag some carts into here.
guess you want to get rid of these houses that I put here. Delete. And then let's see if we can broken wagon. That's a good one. A goblin home. <laughs> so weird. I don't want a goblin house. Some log buildings like that. Tree house, nah. Yeah. Alright, cool. Yes, Rule 20 knows exactly where you live. This is an exact replica of your place using using GPS coordinates from you know every time you chat, <laughs> they get your GPS coordinates feed directly into the app. You know what I mean? Um and that's how they do. Oh, look at all these little house ruins. Okay. Yeah, those are okay. Yeah, let's just uh, get rid of these. And let's. Yeah, we're just gonna mess around with one of these house ruins and see if. Uh, see what we got here. And let's actually try to see if we can get some some dirt roads. Cause I have these roads. Oh, so the road cross dirt is not bad. Dirt path. Let's add that to the library. Huh. Well, they have a lot of good. They have a lot of good stuff here. Actually, look at that. Okay, family homes. That's a good. That's, that's a good one to have. Hmm. I think I like this dirt road the best. This one looks pretty cool. Dirt road here. Oh, I just want to get rid of the cop car. That's it. Just the cop car. All right. So we got. Let's just make this a little bit longer. Let's get rid of these. Yeah, I think the only thing with this dirt road is that it has a really uh, large, um, like, selection box. And I wish I just had a longer one, because it's almost hard to see where it starts and where it stops. But I think we're good on that so far. Let's get rid of this car. And let's do this one. Here we are going to rotate this around. And put that up there. And let's do the same thing for this last road here. Okay. Great. Oh, no. <laughs> Did not mean to do that. I just want to get, I just want to get rid of uh, this uh, construction thing. Okay, sweet. So now we have some some dirt rows, a goblin positioning system. That's awesome. I think we actually used, man. I think we used that joke like way back on Rivals of Waterdeep, like in maybe season one or season two. It was pretty awesome. All right, great. So we got some dirt roads. Um, 
we got uh, let's get another let's get another old house here oh let's see old building right let's let's see what we get for old building probably not much um so I might actually actually just go back to old house because there were some cool things there let's see isometric stuff Ooh, this is actually pretty good. Yeah, this is pretty good. But yeah, like this is gonna be like a log building. It's just yeah, yeah. Always, always remember you can hold down Alt to uh, place something uh, that's not exactly on the grid lines. Um, so that ends up working pretty well. Yeah, so that one's like the bigger one. We'll get rid of these as well. And put these little smaller ones here. Here. Let's also get some, uh, I'm basically doing like, I want to do like a map basically of what Techburg used to look like. So I'm looking for some older assets. Um, so yeah, covered wagon. Very good. Steampunk horseless. Look at that. Okay. It's just a horse. Horse carriage. Wow, there's so many, so many good, so many good horse carriages. I'm gonna copy all these to the library because these are awesome. Tyranny pack. We got. Man, I don't know which one to use. There's so many. Uh, I do like this one though. This this one seems pretty cool. Covered wagon. Actually, I don't like. I don't like that it's diagonal. So I'm actually gonna get rid of that one. All right, just uh, entering. Okay. All right, so. Yeah, I don't want a diagonal one. Um, yeah, we'll just try this one. Yeah, yeah. I think that one's like a adequate size. Wagon there, and then yeah, I think we're good. So we're gonna actually another version of the school here. Yeah, so we so we're gonna have two things of that, and. Oh, my foot hurts. <laughs> okay, great. And then I just want to look for just, uh, I don't know how to, I'm looking for like a park that is dirt, but I don't want to just search for dirt park. <laughs> like, I don't know, uh, old park or just dirt patch, <laughs> dirt square. Like yeah, every 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 once in a while the uh you know I, I I get a little puzzled on search terms. Yeah, old park, yeah, of course it's not gonna be something weird. Uh dirt square, maybe? Uh yeah, I don't know what to what I would search for to think about like just like a thing of dirt. I guess rocks and sand, maybe. 
Hmm. Yeah, maybe something farm related. Uh, uh, yes, obviously there's going to be a whole bunch of farm stuff I already have. Maybe I'll just do just a bunch of hay, maybe. Let's see. I did ungroup that, right? Oh, actually, yeah, I can just use that. Yeah, I forgot that I uh I grouped those trees on top of it. Sorry, y'all. Glasses, a little dirty. A little dirty. Okay. I do like these belt, these things of uh, hay, though. That's a little too big, but. Take this chalice and move it to the front. There we go. Yeah, so we got some of that. And we got some uh, some chicken here. And yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna get some livestock in here. This is a cat. <laughs> that looks like a dog. Maybe that is a cat, though. Is my perspective off? Is that a cat? I can't. I have a trouble telling, but that really does look like a dog to me. Not completely sure. Uh, let's see. Oh, this actually might work a little bit better. This is like a actual, actual farm being done. Hmm. So maybe instead of this turnip garden, we can use this farm here. Yeah, I think that works pretty well. Big old farm over there. And let's see what else we got. Outbuildings. Windmill. It would be cool to have a, a windmill somewhere. Yeah, so let's actually get rid of poor chem T here, which I constructed of several different buildings. And let's say this is uh, out building here. And we got the windmill that's basically like powering basically the town, right? Okay, great. So we can, if not change this fencing, maybe get rid of it. So let's just search for, again, this might be a huge thing to search for just fence. But I do want the fences to be a little bit different. Uh, 
Oh. Ooh, that, I like that one, actually. That one might replace this. Like, I know it has that ba that background that's like a little bit of dirt, but that's fine. We, we can deal with that. I'm not too picky about that kind of stuff. Oh, actually, actually, I think I am. Because <laughs> I can use one of these other um, fences around what I already had. So, yeah, actually, I might just use one of these fences around it. Just make it a little bit bigger. Oh my god, look at that selection box. Oh my god, it's all the way down there. All right, great. Uh, is there a rec center? Um, no, I didn't have a, I did not have a rec center planned. Um, yeah, I, I feel like this is the kind of community where the schools probably open up their um, pool and gym and stuff to the general public, kind of like a YMCA. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't have one planned out. Um, no real rec. Not what you would think of as a modern rec area. Um, there could be public parks and that kind of stuff that have pools and that kind of thing. But... But I don't think there would be a full-on uh, rec center. But that's a good thought, though. That, that is a good thought. I actually like that. Um, okay. Ow. You know what? I keep, like, putting my foot on the base of my chair. And, and, and that is hoiting me. All right. So we're going to get rid of these fences here. Mansions. And let's do look for an old old mansion, which again is another weird search terms. But the good news is even if you have like weird search terms, uh things tend to come up and it might surprise you a bit. Got a whole bunch of nobleman's mansion stuff here. But like this stuff is for like inside the mansion. I'm looking for like outer mansions. Uh, look at all that stuff that is all for inside. <laughs> I could just have the word mansion. Um, look at that. A little ice mansion. I love how they have the uh, rotations of it, too. Look at that. That's actually pretty cool. Snow-covered city. Look at that. Hey, if y'all like the show enough, you tell Roll20 that you love it. Maybe we'll have a new season and we'll do a winter a winter wonderland. You know, like a snow covered version of Techburg. Actually, I should I should be saving these nobleman's mansion style murderous manor, <laughs> which I love. Pretty, pretty princess pack. Uh, let's see. A holiday special like peanuts. Yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? We can make that happen. Oh, actually, yeah. Here, Here's a map that we just used. The Alchemist Lab.
Yeah, so I don't think they have exactly what I'm looking for, but really I just need just an old building, right? J just some old fancy houses. So I'm actually going to do that search I did earlier for the uh, old house. Just see if I overlooked one that looks a little bit nicer than the others. Like this, actually, that's a tree house? That actually looks pretty cool. It doesn't even look like a tree house. Would that look okay there? Actually, no, that's definitely a tree house. It kind of looks like a mailbox. Now that I see it. <laughs> All right, let's look for about fancy building, yo. As you see, I'm a master of search terms. I'm a master of of the of the uh, English language. You know what I mean? So the terms I use are incredible. Um, all right, let's see here. You know, I think we're just gonna go with. I think what I'm gonna do is. I'm gonna hmm, about what's another word for like like estate or manor or something like that. But the problem is, yeah, that like a, a lot of these are for inside, not for outside, right? Let's see. Let's see if there's some from the web that we can use. Probably not. State Manor is one, right? Um, yeah, I I feel like I've uh, extended all their views of mansion. So again, these are great inside stuff. I love these. Yeah, look at that library. That looks awesome. And the floors. Look at these rooms look great. Yeah, I think I have I'm good on manor stuff. Let's see the manor. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Thank you, token set number 16. Ooh, look. Look at these, yeah. Manor is the word. If you are looking to look for for stuff for fancy houses, they are manners. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I'm actually going to put them a little bit there. Okay. Yes. Yes. It read Manor on the banner. That's right. That's right. We <laughs> we got it down. But but that's good. So, so I know now to use Manor when we're uh, looking for things like that. That helps me out a lot. Uh some weird truck in the background sorry if that's coming over on the mic but some truck is like blaring on his horn like uh i guess there's somebody probably double parked or something all right so i want to do a quick comparison of these so we got a regular tech burg this tech burg okay i think i can i think i can deal I know that this school building is the same, but the point is that it's like an old school building that they've been using for a while. So, okay. Feel good about that. Um, feel good about that. So, let's just call this Techberg 2. And let's just bring our, just bring our characters there. Just to make sure all the lighting and stuff is good. Because every once in a while, 
if there's lighting things and it makes the whole thing dark and that kind of thing. But it looks, it looks fine. It looks fine. All right. Cool. Very excited. Very excited about that. All right. So now we got a whole bunch of other things that we've not quite done yet. So I actually want to put ones that I've already done kind of on the top and ones that like I've used. So we've used the quarry already. The quarry Minecrafts we've used. We've used the quarry map. We've used this dungeon. We used the school outside already. We've not, oh yeah, and the hidden room we also used. Right? Um, so we've not used the teacher's lounge, chem tea, the turnip area, this chalice temple, quarry ruins we've not used, forest tower outside, inside, um, bedroom. I don't even quite remember this one. I have this one. Why is it an object? It should be a map. So let's change that to the map layer. And man, sometimes you download stuff and like you're like, I don't even remember downloading that. This is definitely one of those times. Oh yeah, this is because yeah, look how big the selection box is. It like takes up the whole thing. Let's just let's see what we can do here. Uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think I don't think this one's gonna work. Um, this seems a little too hard to fit it in for what I want to do, but we we will try. It's like, I just don't think it's meant to be, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's meant to be like the whole tile. I think it's meant to be like a smaller tile. So, so like maybe as part of another room. So yeah, I think I'm gonna get rid of this one because I have all the, I have all these other things and just cause I'm looking to just clean this up a little bit. Um, well, actually, you know what? Maybe I can connect it with this part. So I have this forest tower inside part here. So maybe I can have that and maybe I can connect that with the bedroom. So I can kind of consolidate these maps a little bit. So I can copy this one and paste it into here let's, let's see if that how that works out i know it's different like art styles but yeah work with me here uh no nah, i don't really like that but i can say that maybe these two rooms are connected right so so i have this as like the forest tower inside and this is also the forest tower inside so forest tower bedroom right so so like what we said earlier that this forest tower part is probably for when people are going hunting right so they'll, so there'll be bows and arrows all that kind of stuff um and then this bedroom could be like you know where people go and rest like before they go out um to battle Just say we have just a grid of these. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So so that like this is where they could stay. Each one has two beds and a table. Um, yeah. So that'd be the forest tower outside and inside. Um, 
couple other things that we have here that we've not used a lot. Let's see if there's anything interesting here. Oh, yeah, we got this old-timey tavern. Yeah, so this whole thing. This is a... This has a map as well. Okay, so this old tiny tavern. Um, I really do like this. Uh, let me see if uh, the players can see it first. Yes, they can. Very good. All right, so I'm going to move this one up here. over here I'm like almost trying to put them in like the order that I'm thinking that they will probably show up now obviously the uh, players can you know <laughs> not muck all this up because the game is about um, everybody right but I do like to have a path that I not that I like to go I basically like to have a default path where if the characters well, I, I should say if the players are either stuck on what to do or if they're indecisive <laughs> or um, if they ask someone in the town for like advice, I always like to have sort of a set pair of things where they would recommend a, a certain thing, right? Now, now, the recommendations have to be in line with who that character is though, right? If I design a AI character that's meant to be a little like duplicitous and uh, shady, you know, they might intentionally give you the wrong advice, right? Or like they might try to lead you into a trap, right? So I don't want to set up a mechanic where every time you ask any person, they always give you 100% the proper um, information. I want it to like depend on the characters that I'm building. Um, it, it, and it does get a little more nuanced though, because I do want to encourage, I always want to encourage players to go out and invest in the world, talk to people, like not just try to fight people. And I know that, I mean, this isn't like D and D it's not a combat heavy system, but I do think that just a lot of people that come into our RPGs, you know, it's very easy to. Think about it as, say, a video game or another game, and you come in with, like, a very adversarial, like, conflict-first um, kind of, uh, you know, mentality. Um, I think people call it, like, murder hobos, <laughs> where, where you're basically, like, a bunch of people that d don't live anywhere. Um, but, uh, yeah, we uh, don't want that here. So I'm trying to... I want to invest, invest in people talking to people and going around the world, but I also don't want to make it so that every character in this town is like a magical box of wisdom. You know what I mean? Um, I want them to have the, their own goals and like, a, and like, a, I also, I, I won't show you here because that would definitely be a spoiler, but I keep a list of a whole bunch of random characters that I generated, you know, just in case, like like the students might be at the park and say, "Hey, I want to talk to you," like like a person I I see, right? I don't like to make up those people on the fly. I mean, I'll definitely make up some parts about them on the fly, but I like to at least have like some names, um, and some random, uh, um, you know, occupations. And just maybe one or two, like, character traits. I don't go too overboard on, like, characters that no one might not ever meet. Um, but I, I like to have at least one or two in my head. I usually roll a uh, d20 to, like, I figure out what. Just to see how they would react. So, like, if there's somebody that's, you know, that's normally scared or, like, anxious, they might run away, right? Or, like, try to exit out 
of the conversation, right? If they're friendly, it's like, are they overly friendly, right? Are they getting in your personal space, you know? Um, so, so yeah, just those kind of things. Yeah, like I try to keep a couple of those on deck just in case the players ask uh, about that. So, oh, thank you so much for the sub. Uh, uh, appreciate it. Uh, the Zach Man Man. The, the Zach Man Man. Got it. The, the Zach Man Man. Only one Zach, though, man. I, 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 I do like that, though. It's like a 212. Two. It's like a either the area code for New York City. Well, for, for, for like Manhattan specifically. Or it's like a palindrome, man. 212. Feeling that. All right. So, yes. So let's bring that up there. Uh, you know, let's start to fill out. Um, Postal Tower is interesting. City Street Buildings. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah, so so this is basically on like a street. So there's different kinds of buildings here. Hmm, this might be a little bit of overkill because I feel like if I have all these, I gotta put something interesting in every single building. You know, I mean you don't have to, I guess. Um, but I think if the players were were going through and just searching a bunch of like things that are completely empty. I feel like that wouldn't be a fun gaming experience, you know. So, so, so I'm actually gonna probably put this one down to the bottom. Yeah, yeah, great, great, great uh, points, Sphinx. There's a lot of people in real life who you talk to don't have the right info you expect them to have, and some may unknowingly give you the wrong info. Yes, I do sometimes when I'm talking f from a from an NPC like uh, Felix. I'm usually rolling in the background. Now, I'm usually rolling like physical die so, so that the players don't see the rules. But yeah, I'm rolling like, does he give this up, right? D does, does he share something about that prophecy that he might not mean to share, but he slips up, you know? So like, I try to let the dice kind of decide like, you know, how candid the NPCs are going to be with the, uh, excuse me, with the uh, players. So I am actually, because I keep yawning, I'm going to put on some coffee. So give me about five minutes or so, and I will be right back.
Okay. All right. Yeah, so got my coffee. And b- b- by the way, y'all, this, um, I promise this is not a sponsor thing, but this Contigo, uh, I don't know what the brand, what the, uh, if there's a model number or like whatever, this thing keeps coffee warm forever. Like it, hours, you know what I'm saying? It makes no sense. Well, actually, it makes sense. I could get into the the physics of it, but this is not not that kind of stream where we're going to get in, into ther- into thermodynamics. But this thing, I used to use this in the before times because there was a time before COVID, yo. Um, um, I had a pretty heavy travel schedule, um, so I would I would drive around a lot for work, and I would keep this thing in my car. And yo, it would just keep coffee warm forever. Like it is great. I would highly recommend if you're looking for a coffee mug, like these joints are great. You know, or if you're just at your desk and you're working for like a bunch of hours, you know, and like, and you're kind of like, you're sipping your coffee, you know, you're, you're like not a person that like downs it. You know, I'm more of a sipper, you know, it, it works really, really well. And I think it's a brand you could get at Target and stuff. It, like, like it's not like some specialty thing that like you have to like um, order. Yes, thank you, the great Rafiki, for sure. Thank you for joining. All right, so um, let's get back to our map. So, as he said before, this one with the um, with the city street buildings. I think we're gonna leave that one uh, at the end a little bit. Let's look at some of these other ones. Forest sewer. So this is interesting because this one is like, because I know that we're definitely going to have a forest section. And I don't know. This one is a little weird. I mean, I get, I get what it's doing, but for some reason it doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't seem to fit what I like, but it's not terrible. I'm basically looking for more things to go off the forest. Let's see. Let's see here. Oh, wow. Look at this one. Huh. So this one has... So this is like a combination... But this is more like a water beach, well, not a beach, but like a water area. And then like a manhole here that goes down into there. You know, we haven't set up that there's any water, that that like we're near any water. And, and like just because we made us kind of in those northwest, like, like those uh, Chicago exurbs. I mean, there are like lakes and stuff, but you know, you wouldn't dump your sewage into a lake. So, well, I hope I hope you wouldn't. <laughs> so, I I like this idea, um, but not for the whole thing. I think just this one might work actually. So we're actually gonna move this one up to right near those forest towers so we got inside we got, oh I, I I didn't name this one Let's see forest tower bedroom oh whoops I went to the wrong map All right, yeah. All, all, always remember that when you're typing stuff in here, you gotta press enter at the end for it to actually save. You know, I sometimes by default I'll type it in, and then I'll be thinking about the next thing, so I'll, I'll like click on <laughs> like another part of it, and it just, it just won't save it. So yeah, use that enter button. Uh, that's what it's made for. Um, all right, so we got the outside of the forest, and we talked about some of these other people here. Um, 
I believe I made them tokens. Yeah, yeah. So all those folks are tokens there. And so we got that. We have the inside of that tower. We have a uh, bedroom. Where do we have this part here? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to put some. I guess the only thing that's kind of bothering me is is this green stuff? That is sewage, right? Yo, look at that. They have waves that are uh, diffracting, they're creating a, 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 a diffraction, a, a, a diffraction uh, thing. Wow. That's really interesting. I like that. That's a nice little detail there. That's pretty good. I sometimes forget when I'm renaming music pieces. Yeah. Yeah, so this green stuff is like sludge, which I guess is okay. I like having this like whirlpool in the middle, though. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'll leave it in here. I'll, I'll leave it in here, um, but I do want this to be somehow a tied to, tied to that, f to the uh, overall, like, forest thing. Yeah, so, we got, and this will be, like, uh, tower sewer. All right, so now we got a bunch of forest-related stuff. Which is great, because that because that is exactly what I wanted. Um, we've not used the school lounge yet, but we will be using it. I kind of I meant to introduce it a little bit earlier, but um, but the as you'll learn as like a GM, well, if you GM already, sometimes the players uh take a little longer on a task than you thought, you know, um, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But sometimes when I'm planning out the pacing, right, I kind of say, well, the players should be here by episode five. But, you know, sometimes uh, they might take an interest in a part of the map or an NPC that you, not that you didn't plan on, but that, you know, you just didn't think would, like, I take that long. It's perfectly normal, like it happens. And my suggestions to all the jams out there, make sure... If your players are attracted to something, you got to do some on the fly development of that thing. Don't constantly try to steer them away from something that they love or that they are interested in just to pivot them towards something that you're interested in. Right. Always keep I, I build out a bunch of like alternate scenarios and that kind of stuff um, that that so so that. If the characters need to go off the beaten path, I try to have at least a few outlines of like pre-written things that they can do. But oftentimes players will suggest and think about things that you had no idea of. So my thing is I want everybody to have fun at the table. And as a GM, everybody's having fun when they're just thinking of ideas and just trying things and, and something actually comes to fruition from those new things, right? So um, make sure to, you know, uh, that means that the, that your pacing might be off, right? That means that, like, players might take a little longer to, like, to, like, I get somewhere. You might never get to use a map that you designed and that you loved, you know? But, hey, number one, you can use it for, like, for another campaign, right? <laughs> and number two, like, if people are having fun, y'all, that's the goal of all of this. That's the goal of gaming in general. People are having fun. So if, if that means that I never get to use that uh, school lounge map, you know, it's okay. With that said, I'm going to find a way to use it. <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. Let's get back to work here. So 
so we have all our forest things here. Um, I think we pretty much have everything that I wanted from the turnip areas. So like, remember that this character here is Amelia Vander Witten. So, sorry, Vander Witten. So she is Mana and Julian's neighbor. Um, she convinced Julian to to run for the for the mayor of uh, Techburg. And, you know, she's also the main proponent of the Turnip Festival. So the fact that Mana announced that the, that the, that the, the Turnip Festival was uh, closed, um, you know, uh, obviously, Amelia does not does not favor that. So this is her in the La Turnip thing. And then there's a little like compartment here on the lower left. And that compartment, I think, is going to lead to this kind of smaller underground thing. Which, again, I'm not sure about. I kind of like it because I can put things in like four different places, you know? Um, and I made it so that the places are like kind of rotated each time. But at the same time, I don't know. Usually, I like to have a bunch of different options, as I said before, and then I might go to it in the game. I I, I might not. That's just the way that I like to play. All right, y'all. We get, got the turnips. We also have this quarry area. So we have one and two. And like, again, these look exactly the same, except the, the, the design of it. Is a lot different. And to that, I actually want to. Maybe Techburg is not. Maybe this older version of it is not all green. Maybe. Maybe if we search for, oh wait, not not dirt square. It was like farm, farmland or something that I had found before. That like gave me all those cool little things. Actually, no, it was just farm, right? Yeah, I think it might be like I'm looking for basically like a not as bright green as it is now, more of a. See how that looks if I put this to the back. Oh, whoops. I'm going to put this to the back. Oh, I forgot that I had all the names there. <laughs> forgot about this. Oh, no, I definitely don't want it to be that grainy. I want like a bigger, I want one that's like map size. Plus, it's also, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, it's not that hard to see. I think this can work. Get rid of it wholesale. All right, send that to the back. Oh, I had a whole other road up here. You gotta extend it a little bit just to make sure it connects. Okay. All right, so I wanna copy all three of these. 
which it looks like I cannot. But man, I I really wish it would change. It, it would keep the fact that I have sent things to the back. Looks like it's not doing that. back to another one okay got one here send that to the back oh thank you for the raid Le bon thank you very much I appreciate that we're just here building maps y'all you know what I'm saying and I appreciate that so much. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to apply these little squares here. Greetings. Greetings. Um, and I'm basically trying to apply these older squares to this older part. Oh, oh, oh from French role players. That's what's up. That's what's up, yo. Welcome, France. Now, a funny story for me about France. So the first time I ever traveled internationally, um, I was, how was I? I was about 22, 23 years old. I was right out of college. Um, one of my best friends that I met in college went to graduate school in Paris um, because uh, he was like a, a, a classical music major and he went to, uh, get his master's in, I think it was music theory. So something like that. I don't know the exact thing. So like he was living in uh, Paris. I was living in New York and like, just like working here. And he was like, Hey, why don't you come visit? And I was like, what are you talking about? Come visit. Like I've never, I don't have a passport. You know what I'm saying? I, I've, I've never flown anywhere like, like, uh, the, like, uh, that, that, uh, far. But then I found out that the job that I had, I flew a lot f for my job because I was like a, um, I, a IT consultant, right? So I flew all over the place every week. And I found out that what I didn't know is that, wait, how, do, how do I access these names? Yeah, that I was basically getting all these... Um, Frequent flyer miles, which I thought I could only use for business travel, but it turned out I could use for anything. So I was able to use my miles to fly to Paris. And it was incredible. Even though when I first went there, I was a little overly ambitious. Like I tried to see everything on my first day. So I basically... I went to visit my uh, friend and I brought like a list of things that we needed to do and see. Like I had like the Louvre on there. I had Versailles on there. I had like the Arc de Triomphe and, you know, all, all the stuff that like you would imagine, I guess, because, you know, this is all stuff I remember like reading about in history class and like all that stuff. And my friend was like, yo, chill. Like we're not going to do hundred percent, like all the touristy stuff. So we did do like some of that, but the cool stuff was because my friend, because he speaks French, you know, we were able to do a lot of the local stuff, you know, which was actually great, you know, because we weren't only confined to like the touristy areas. And one thing I found that was also super weird. So at the time I like I uh, traveled, right? Um, everybody was always asking me about, um, George Bush because like th this was, you know, after, uh, after the Bush Gore stuff. So this was like 2003 and they were all asking me what my opinion on George Bush was, <laughs> what George W. Bush was. Um, it's an interesting thing because when you travel as an American, right, people assume that you agree with every single thing that the American government does, you know? And I was just like, no, 
I really don't. You know, I, 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 I didn't vote for him, all that kind of stuff. And it was just interesting. Literally almost every person that like I met asked me what I thought about, about, about Bush. You know, it was uh, pretty funny. Pretty funny. Um, the other thing I found in my trip to uh, Paris was that at all of the tourist places, when they saw I was in a, a, a like American, which I mean, it's pretty obvious in terms of the way I was dressing and stuff. They always offered me a Coke. That was always the first thing was, was like, would you like a Coke? Do you want a Coke? Like, <laughs> and the Cokes were always like super overpriced. I mean, super overpriced. And they were always offering Coke, you know, like outside of the major like tourist traps and stuff. I found it hilarious that the view at that time, I don't know if 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 it's changed, but like the view of like at that time of like who an American is, is like somebody that, you know, agrees with every single thing that George W. Bush does and loves Coke. Like it was just, just a very interesting thing I found there. Put this in the front. There we go. Now my uh, now now my horse and carriage is up back there. Yeah, the, yeah. I w- I would love to go back too. I've only been that one time, but it was so much fun, and we went and saw like everything. It was great. Well, yeah. I mean, nobody knew what was uh what was uh coming. Unfortunately, um. Yeah, you know, funny enough, I don't remember seeing a lot of burgers there, but it was always Coke. Every place, every restaurant was like, would you like a uh, Coke, sir? (laughs) And then the Cokes were always like, you know, something ridiculous. I don't know the exact price, but it was like way more than like anything. The other thing that I found very interesting was that um, like espressos and like cappuccino and stuff was super affordable. Like you could get like a cafe or like something for like a Euro. Now, again, this was way back. Right. But yeah, like it was way cheaper than, you know, any kind of, uh, of uh water soda juice or like anything. It was like literally the cheapest thing that you could get was that and wine. So I was like, I kind of like France because you can just have wine and coffee, you know, for cheap. So <laughs> every restaurant has the best burgers. We have the best burgers in Paris. <laughs> and um, I don't, I don't remember if this was my trip. No, I don't think this was my French trip. But when I went to Rome, I took a trip to uh, Italy. And when I went to Rome, they had an American themed restaurant and it was the funniest thing i'd ever been to uh it was like going into like a chili's on overdrive like you go in there and they were playing like john wayne flicks and they just had like cowboy hats and like muscle cars and everything was like burgers and cokes. It was kind of like a um, a uh, a really bad version. Um, do you remember the if you've seen like Pulp Fiction, kind of like that retro diner that they went in where they did the twist, you know, like uh, where like uh, J- John Travolta and uh, Uma Thurman they like sat in that like car thing. It was so funny, and like all the waiters. They would say things like uh, totally dude and that kind of stuff. It was so funny. I was like, yo, we are. I love seeing parodies of us because we are ridiculous. Um, Let's see. France is a country of just trying to be you to fancy burger in a restaurant. And if you want a cheap one, you go to McDonald's. Yeah, I was shocked by how prevalent McDonald's is. (laughs) internationally i saw this everywhere i've traveled i've been to i've been to france 
I've been to Amsterdam, I've been to Egypt, and I've been to Italy. Um, oh, and Switzerland as well. Um, and I was shocked at how prevalent McDonald's is. I thought that was just something in the U.S., and that's it. You know what I mean? I was very surprised that McDonald's is like literally a worldwide thing. Uh, I just had no idea. No idea. So, okay, so I'm trying to get rid of this text now. So I'm actually going to have to move that and just delete these that way and then move our little dirt road back down. And also want to delete that. Great. Awesome. So I actually like this now. This feels significantly different from our like brighter map here. All right. So, so I'm feeling that. Um, and also it matches the kind of quarry one and quarry two maps that we had here, right? Where we have that one. And then we have this one. So I'm actually going to call this just quarry. Uh, let's just say quarry. Quarry Temple. Quarry Temple 2. Yeah. So we'll actually change the order of those because I want those to be in the same order as Techburg is. That and that. Great. Awesome work. All right. Um, also got some questions about how I did the lighting in the last section. So I did want to go over that. Um, so let's actually use the minecarts as an example. So if I bring the players over to the minecart map, which is right here. So this is what they see. So basically what I had to do here is if you go to the settings for this map here, which means I click on the page tool toolbar here. I like highlight it and I go to this, to the page settings right here. If I cl click on that, I have all this stuff in the uh, first one, but I'm really going to go here to dynamic lighting, right? So if I put that on, it's basically going to darken the whole map, right? And then I need to go to the specific token that, like, I want to actually light. So let me actually move to the object view. So I have to go to this, and then I have to set the, like, lighting on this. I have to give it vision so that it can see. And like, I also want the token to emit light. So I have like a, like a, like a 10 feet of like a radius of light around it. So the total light there, that is what is being e emitted. But, but the important part that I kept forgetting about is you also have to make sure that this uh, controlled by part is actually filled out. Right, because I had it so like I can see it here because I'm in the game, but if that's not actually filled out by like all the players like this here, I have to have that for the players to actually see it. If I don't have that, then they won't see it. So I was actually a little it threw me off. A little bit because when I exit and rejoin as like a player on the duplicated tab, I'm a player with um, under Sharif. So I got to make sure that all the players can actually see it. Right. So make sure that the lighting is on in the page and then you go to your uh, tokens and you give them vision and you turn the bright light on and you set a, a radius and then that's how you get something that looks like this where you can actually move it and the light follows your follows your uh token. So yeah, it's uh it's it's like super cool. I can tell that like the players loved it. And I loved it, which is why I, which is why I did it for two straight 
episodes. We did uh, maps with lighting. All right. Awesome. So, um, yeah, if, if you have any uh, any uh, questions on how I did that, like lighting, j just like I throw them in the chat, you know, and um, we'll try to answer. Them. Now I want a burger, y'all. Now I'm thinking about burgers. <laughs> I got myself in burger mode. You know what I mean? Look, look, y'all. I need to fly to Paris. I need to go to the fanciest restaurant. And get the biggest, fanciest burger that I can. And then fly back. Right? Actually, can you even... I don't know if France has, like, a um, restriction on Americans, like, flying there. Because we've been handling COVID, like, so badly. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know if I could... Even if I wanted to. I don't know if I could even fly in, internationally. But I have one vaccine shot. But I'm not fully vaccinated. And I think... To travel internationally, I think you have to, well, I don't know. I know getting into a, into the U.S., I think you have to show a vaccination card, if I remember correctly. But from, but, but like from, from flying here to, to like another place, I'm not sure if you have to. Not, oh, no, not, 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 not like handling good like here either. Yeah, yeah, I think that the, uh, I think Western Europe is like pretty much, I think like you have to either, I don't think, I don't think the borders, I don't think you can fly there. I'm pretty sure if you had like a working visa or a family thing. Oh no, you didn't restrict flights from Wuhan in February. Oh no. Oh, only old and medical people. So they haven't done like, uh, like uh, teachers or, um, you know, or like that kind of stuff. Cause one great thing, about me in Wisconsin was I was able to get my first shot because they're basically targeting like uh certain like neighborhoods in my uh, city. And they're basically saying everybody in these neighborhood, if you're over 16, you can just get a vaccine. Right. Because like these tend to be um, areas w with like a lot of uh, marginalized folks. So like, African Americans and Puerto Ricans and Dominicans, Hmong, and they're basically like, you know, we need to make sure that we get to, you know, to the neighborhoods that don't have a lot of of resources in terms of hospitals and medical stuff. So they're pretty much like giving away like vaccines. I went, I went to, to, to the pharmacy to get it, and the lady said every time somebody comes up to pick up a subscription, sorry, not a subscription a prescription for any kind of a medication, they're asking them if they want a vaccine dose along with it. So they're really trying to do that. Um, yeah, I'm really hoping that, th that the vaccine becomes more available. Um, because I feel like as of now, actually the U S I think not that we have too many, but I feel like we have, we, we have like three companies, right? Because the AstraZeneca one isn't here yet. So I, I know that they're using that one internationally, but if we end up getting doses from AstraZeneca, I feel like we I feel like we won't even need them, right? Because I feel like we're we're doing a fairly good job of 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 like uh, trying to make sure that like everyone is uh, is vaccinated. So hopefully by twenty twenty two, you know things will be somewhat back to normal i don't know i don't know how much more of this i can take like a full year of being like a hermit being isolated is pretty tough even with all the internet stuff that 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 we have right can you imagine if this pandemic happened in like 1985 you know what i mean or like 1990 like before a lot of people had the internet like there were no cell phones, you know what I'm saying? Like the best you could do is call somebody on a landline, you know, um, or like mail letters, you know, like imagine if this happened then, like that would have been, that would have been something. I would have read all my books like 30 times, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah, it would be something. I will, I will, I will be a baby, blissfully ignorant. Yeah, well, some of us were of age, 
and I was out like like I wasn't an adult, but like I was I was like a I was a, a preteen, you know. So I was out riding my bike and doing dumb stuff, going to the park. But man, if this happened before the internet era, oh my god, that would have been something else. Something else. All right, so let's go to another map. Let's see if there's any other ones that look like they tickle our fancy here. So I had this as basically a T Bergen outhouse. So this is kind of like a part that's next to their mansion. Um, and I still kind of like the idea of it. I haven't found out where to incorporate this in my thing. Um, unless the players really want to, we might, we probably won't be going to the specific mansions to the T Bergen or the Chadwick mansion. Um, but we're doing that. I always wanted to have a kids on bike esque adventure. Oh yeah. We de man, we definitely had times where we got on our bikes and just rode around the neighborhood and we'd find weird stuff. I would say the closest thing that I had to that was, so I lived right near a bunch of, of train tracks and sometimes even though our parents totally did not want us to do this we would go walking on the train tracks and we would just take them as far as we could and like when like a train came we would obviously go to like the sides and stuff but you find all kind of stuff on the train tracks and we'd find some creepy stuff we'd find some weird stuff it felt like we were like investigating a mystery you know like we were basically trying to be like the Goonies, right? Like we were hoping that we'd find some trap door or like treasure chest or something like that. You know, nothing that cool happened, but it, it was very fun. All right. So yeah, I like this L house idea. Um, d definitely want to keep it in my back pocket. Oh, I didn't notice there was this. I didn't notice this part down here. What is that? We need that. Okay. All right. Uh, so we got the quarry temples. We got the outhouse, the mansion. So I do have some floors here. Let's look at this abandoned village. Now, this is interesting. This is interesting. I have an abandoned village. I'm actually going to move this up. I'm going to move this up next to the uh, old timey tavern. For reasons. Um, yeah, so if I have an abandoned village here. And... house is a little bit smaller yeah sorry my uh gears are turning with spoiler stuff that i can't share but uh yeah i like the idea of that abandoned visual village especially the houses all being in a circle which almost always means something creepy is gonna happen if you see things in a circle um but yeah, 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 yeah. We we just walked down the tracks and just ate candy, you know, ate ice cream, jumped around, had fun. I mean, it was really, really great. You know, so yeah, those just the times of youth, you know. We also used to build these like ridiculous ramps for our bikes. So like I lived near in addition to like living near uh, train tracks. I also live near a uh, dead end. So the dead end, they'd have like, you know, slabs of cardboard and rocks and that kind of stuff. So we would like build these ramps, you know? So we would like build these ramps and then try to jump off of them with our bikes. And uh, your boy Sharif, not the most coordinated person in the world, definitely uh, fell a lot and uh, got like a lot of scrapes and things. Um as I was doing that, but was very fun. So uh, this is all going to come back via karma. 
by the way, if I have a uh, kid, kid is totally going to do all this stuff that I did as well. And it's going to be a disaster. I know it. I know I'm going to, I'm going to get all the pain, all the pain that I gave my parents. I'm going to get it back threefold, you know? So. But that, that is a, that is an announcement for another day. Um, all right, so so let's go down. So we have some floors of the Chadwick Mansion as well. Um, oops, I am in. Oh, this should also be a map. Yeah, yeah, let me stay in map view here. In map view. This coastal tower one, I don't think I really need because, as I said before, we're not really doing any water stuff. So, unless I wanted to have some sort of flashback thing or something, I think I'll, I don't think I don't need the coastal tower. Oh, whoops! I can't delete the page I'm on, which makes total sense. Yeah, so the coastal tower is out of here. And let's see, first. WWD. So uh, these are all just like random dungeon kind of kind of layouts or like building layouts. <sighs> oh man, look how this was pretty interesting. But yeah, I don't feel like I'm gonna use. I feel like I've already done the kind of creeping around a room stuff. So I have a bunch of these. I think I'll leave them at the end. And then I have this is more like a castle. Kind of, which I don't really need for this campaign. So, I don't think I need city map too. Yeah, actually, I don't think I need any of these city maps. I actually feel pretty good with the map that we have. So, these city maps, I'm going to get rid of city map one, city map two. Yeah, I always like to at least clean up my pages. I mean, I could technically just keep them all on there forever, but I don't know. I like um, having a, a like a leaner list, as, as, especially because I already have a bunch of maps here already, too. I have like 15 or 20 maps, right? So I think I'm going to try to clean up like some of these on the bottom here. So, yeah, actually, you know, all these ones that especially have words on them, I'm getting rid of all this. Yeah, yeah, all these ones with like ground floor, basement, all that stuff. I don't need all that. So all these numbered ones here, basically, because these are all from the same creator. Gonna get rid of those. And again, I'm not getting rid of them because they're bad or anything. I'm just getting rid of them because I feel like I have a little too many pages. And I would prefer to have a bit of a smaller footprint. Take a look at this one. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get rid of uh, that one as well. That's like a whole other town, Austin world, that I don't have in my campaign. So, great. All right, what is this bits one? I don't remember this. Oh, these are just like... Trees and beds. Yeah. I don't think I need that. So, actually, actually, you know what? I think that one might have been the first unused asset folder. So, sorry, page. And, and then I put it on, on a different page. So for the people that just joined, I keep a page called unused assets. Where if I find something that looks interesting, I just kind of plug it in on this page. Map things that are maps. The object things that are objects. Oh, excuse me. Okay. Great. Oh, man, this uh, coffee is keeping me going, you know. 
Ooh, I'm glad I made the decision to to take a little pause. I don't like to pause a lot here because, you know, we only have two hours. Um, but sometimes I just forget to make a thing of coffee early. And I'd rather have it than not have it. Sorry, there's something weird in my glasses. I'm trying to trying to take off. Okay. Yeah, it's like a weird, you see that like thing right there? It's like a little white thing. Let me try it one more time. Oh, I think I got it. I think I got it. I know, y'all. This is great. Incredible video time. Seeing a man clean his glasses. All right, there we go. Okay, yeah, it was bothering me. It was there for like an hour and a half, and I thought it was like something on my monitor, not something on my actual glasses, so my bad. All right, let's take a look at the rest of our stuff. Yeah, I actually have these. Um, funny enough, I don't know where they are now, but I keep, I just bought a bunch of these like, um, where are they? These like, moist eyeglass cleaners from target these like lens wipes here um they work pretty well right it's just like a it's just, it's just like a lens wipe and it'll it'll like clean them really really quick so i just keep a bunch of those on my desk you know i have i have a uh, little like drawer here and i usually watch them every, every morning so all right, so let's see if there's any other unused assets that we want to throw in here. So again, I don't like this one because it says like church on it. And I'm like, we need something that says church on it. No. You know, we already use this one for hunting practice. Um, this one is also a map. To a map, and we also used this one. We did not use the full one, but but we did use this one on the quarry map. We used the quarry map itself. Now I do have this little tunnel here. Now, if you remember, we have a plot line involving tunnels that could possibly be under Tech Third. So this might be an idea, this like kind of like creepy looking tunnel. Ooh, what is this? I don't remember this. What is that? Oh, let's actually bring that into its own page and see if we can investigate this one a little bit further. All right, so we got a new page here. Uh, see, I apologize for for, for the yawning, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> that was that was really bad. Um, interesting. So, are these things like floating, or is or is that supposed to be like water or something? I don't think I can use this for anything. I do really like it though. Um, it's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's especially because th 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 this middle part here, it like reminds me of like a skull, you know, which is like pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Um, oh, I'm trying to think if there's any way I can make this work. But I don't think, especially given that, well, memory, y'all, we only have three episodes left, <laughs> right? So our next episode is episode seven, and that's basically going to be closing chapter two, right? So like chapter one kind of close after that first day. Chapter two um, will most likely close after a second day, 
and then chapter three will be that third day. Yeah, three episodes left. That's what I'm saying. I mean, we have a ten episode arc now. I mean, I'm hoping that roll twenty extends our time, but that's up to y'all. If y'all love the show, definitely tweet at them, email them, all that stuff. Obviously, be respectful, right? Don't like, don't like be out there, um, you know, do do doing that. Oh, speaking of that, if there's any folks still in the chat from France, uh, last episode we had a spirited debate as to what, if they would call soda pop or Coke in Techburg. Now, we saw, I think in the UK, I think they call a carbonated beverage a fizzy drink. What do they call it in France? Do they say soda in France? Do they say fizzy drink? I think I saw somewhere where they call it like mineral or lemonade, I think in South Africa or so. Um, so yeah, if, if, if there's anyone in the chat that came over f- 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 from that raid, is it just soda? Okay. Cause yeah, because, because I think the UK, I think it was like fizzy pop or fizzy drink or something. So I was thinking that France m- m- might've had a, uh, yeah, a different way of saying. It. Yeah, in in the U.S., soda is really kind of I've kind of on the coasts, like like a lot of the East Coast and the West Coast, but the whole middle is like pop, and then in in the South East, it's like Coke. So like every soda is a Coke, which is very confusing, because because like. A, a a waiter, th- th- they'll like come up to you and they'll say like, "Well, like, what kind of Coke do you want?" And then like you're like, "Uh, Mountain Dew." It's like, "What? It's not a Coke, but it kind of is." Um, Coca, Coca, mm. yeah. Uh, Pop does. I mean, I agree, salty ginger, just based off the fact that it's in Illinois. I get it, but remember. I live in Wisconsin and we say soda here. And if Techburg is 45 minutes from Chicago, that means it's pretty close to the Wisconsin border. So maybe, maybe Techburg is trying to be rebellious. They're trying to rebel against this pop thing. And because they're so close to to Wisconsin, they can say soda. You know what I'm saying? Um, Oh, I see. Coke and French is just for the truck. (laughs) Yeah, it it is it, it's kind of I mean, obviously American English is very weird and confusing cuz we definitely use coke for that as well, but so so you never truly know what someone is talking about. <laughs> Let's see. So soda would would speak about everything sugary like iced tea and oh, so soda would include iced tea. That's interesting. Because iced tea is not really carbonated, right? It's just like a brewed tea that's heated up. Yeah, so that's interesting because, yeah, I would think it would just apply to a carbonated drink. But if soda also includes iced tea, I might be wrong. You know, maybe maybe it's it's more just a sugary drink. Okay, so the fuzzy drink or the fizzy drink, I guess, obviously the fizz is the carbonation. Soda is any sugary drink. Got it. Okay. Ooh, try Haunted Mansion. Let's try that. So, like, soda in France is any sugary drink. So, so does that include, like, uh, orange juice? Or, oh, so, sorry, except juice. Well, like, does that include, like, uh, Kool-Aid? You know what I'm saying? Or, like, uh, I don't know, like a Red Bull? You know what I'm saying? That's like a sugary drink. Interesting. All right. So I'm going to search for Haunted Mansion. Let's see what this gives us. Let's see what we got for Haunted Mansion. I really like this map. Yeah, so I don't get anything in the marketplace. I do get a bunch of cool stuff online. Actually, actually, you know what? I'm going to check the 
the full marketplace because every once in a while that search doesn't give me exactly what I want. So I'm actually going to go to marketplace.roll20.net and we're going to search for Haunted Mansion here. And let's see what we get. Haunted Forest Mansion. Mansion Expansion. Look at this. This is so cool. Horror Hunts. Oh, man. I love it. You know what? I'm just going to search for Haunted and see if that brings us up. Let's see. Kool-Aid is like only an, an American thing. Yeah, I guess. Do you have any kind of uh, thing that is like Kool-Aid? Like a powdered, you know, thing that you just like put in water with sugar and just drink it? You know, like a... Uh, is there like a French equivalent to that? I guess that's what I'm saying. And we do not include energy drinks as soda. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's pretty interesting though. Cause it doesn't go by the carbonation. It goes by the sugar really, except for fruit juices. Pretty cool. Good to know. Thank y'all for, for the education. We say, uh, I can't even pronounce that. Poisson gazeuse, which just mean gaz. Five drinks, fuzzy waters. Oh, okay, cool stuff. Good to know, y'all. Y'all are helping to educate me. Uh, this is great. Yeah, so there's all these haunted things here. So I'm gonna try to search for wild dungeons. Let's see. Oh, wait, I did get a, a homeless ghoul. Why the ghoul gotta be homeless? Yeah, why the ghoul gotta be homeless? So we got some horror stuff. We got a horror punk zombie. A punk zombie, <laughs> apparently. Um, yeah, the homeless ghoul thing just seems kind of weird. Let's go to horror monsters, fantasy monsters. A transient ghoul. Yeah. <laughs> Floating head. Okay. Interesting. Uh, yeah, um, I did see that. Uh, that's a good point. Um, yeah, so I do have to book it. So thank y'all for joining us so much. Um, remember all those links on the bottom, bring you to roll 20. Uh, let me just stop. Why am I doing that? Yeah. So all those links on the bottom actually bring you to roll 20. So for example, if you go to youtube.com slash roll 20 app, it's going to bring you right here. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, cool shows here. Um, and if you want to find art, well, well, like first, there's a whole bunch of uh, tutorials and stuff here on the bottom. And there's a whole bunch of uh, playlists for a burn bright for all the D&D &D stuff here. And there's more games. Our game is right down here, which is pretty cool. Um, but but you, you, you can also f find our game by just going to playlists here and then looking for kids on bikes in the creative playlist which would be right here so i'm actually going to put put this link in the chat um uh, just in case you want to check out our playlist all right so just in case you want to favorite that and search that if you haven't seen all of our uh episodes you can catch the first six episodes including our session zero as well um so make sure to check that out um, and make sure to join us live on Twitch um, at twitch.tv slash Roll20App every Monday morning at 10 a.m. Central. Uh, we will be live going through and, and using the maps that you just saw. Um, so it should be fun. Um, so, yeah, everybody have a great rest of the day. Um, and I will see you all next week. Peace.